Madam Prime Minister, it's so good to see you. And on behalf of all the members of D66, I would like to say Tere Talumast and welcome to our party congress. And of course, congr congratulations on becoming the Prime Minister of Estonia. Thank you very much. Tere, tere. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We are delighted that you could share some of your most valuable time with us. It's not that common that we can welcome a Prime Minister to the D66 Congress, although not yet. We're hoping to change that in a few weeks' uh, time. Uh, Kaya, before going into the priorities of your government, uh, I would like to start with our relationship, the relationship between D66 and the Esti Reformia, uh, sorry, <laughs> there I go, <laughs> your party, the Esti Reformie Rakund. I hope I, that's the right pronunciation, thank you. We are two pro-European and liberal parties and you've been working closely together with Marietje Schake and Sophie Innetveld. Can you share something uh, of your work with D66 in the European Parliament? Uh, yes, it's true that we work together very closely and I would say that Marietje was my best friend in the European Parliament. So not only did we work together, we shared the same principles, but we also uh, shared some uh, good uh, uh, you know, evenings and, and events uh, together. So I, I very much value the friendship. And what do you miss the most about me being a member of the European Parliament? Uh, I miss uh, the international uh, view because when you are in the national parliament, uh, then, uh, then it's very much only your country that you see. But in the European Parliament, you listen to others, you listen to their worries, you see uh, work through their eyes and, and also get to know uh, more about their history, their problems and, and you know, sometimes when we are in our countries then we only focus on, you know, what is important uh, for us and then we sort of demand others to know this as well. But uh, the others can accept you only when you also accept them and if you, I mean, step uh, uh, towards them uh, in, in problems that they have and, and it's, it's mutual, uh, this uh, cooperation. Both okay. ways. Thank you very much. And Marietje and Sophie both say hi to you, and they uh, really enjoyed working together with you in the parliament. Um, as a prime minister, you took office exactly one month uh, ago, but it took some time after the elections before you were in the position to form a new government. Um, I'm curious, how did you seize the opportunity to get in the leading position? How did you negotiate your coalition agreement, and what are the priorities for the Kallas administration? Uh, this is true that we won the elections uh, two years ago and we won the elections big time. So we got nine more seats than the next party. But the um, situation was that the others were maybe didn't like uh, our, our victory that much and, and coped together uh, against us. But, uh, but anyway, it uh, um, took two years to work uh, our uh, trust up with the other parties and uh, and uh, form a government in the end. So, so previous government, I would say, uh, was not uh, logical in terms of political sense. Uh, it was only to to gain pow power, and and therefore, uh, what we wanted to show is that together with this other uh, party, the previous prime minister's party, we can actually do things. Um, make decisions that are important for uh, Estonia to move forward. So, so I think uh, this future-oriented uh, European um, look is, is common for our two, uh, two parties. And that's why uh, we got together, formed this uh, coalition. Um, we are focusing on uh, digital issues, on, on climate issues, also uh, some of the uh, problems that we have internally regarding our education system. So, so we hope to get these things moving. It, it sounds like a D66 program, uh, digital topics, education, climate change. Uh, very inspiring uh, uh, to know that this is the priorities for the Estonian government as well. Uh, but it mustn't be easy to uh, start as prime minister during this pandemic. Yes, it's very difficult time. Uh, when you said that uh, today it's it's just one month and and uh, it's true. Uh, I was looking at the calendar and was really thinking that is it really only one month because it seems so long. I mean, 
um, in the middle of crisis and in the middle of crisis where you actually can't see the end of it, uh, which is really difficult for the people. I guess it is the same in Netherlands that, you know, people are so tired of the restrictions, mm. but at the same time, the numbers are really uh, bad and the uh, hospitals are crowded. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, the vaccinations are going too slow. How can we move uh, faster? How can we really get out of this uh, lockdown and, and move on with our lives? Uh, in Estonia, the restrictions haven't been so uh, uh, tense as, as they have been in, in Netherlands, but our numbers are going up and it's probably because of the new variants. So, so it is a difficult uh, task to find the balance on one side, the COVID uh, victims and to how to decrease them. But on the other side, uh, the employment issues and all the victims, invisible victims that we don't really see, uh, that, you know, people who lose their job or people who have problems with mental health, uh, children who are left behind in education. Uh, we have to take these into account as well while we're making the de decisions. It's, it sounds very familiar to the situation in the Netherlands and it uh, also sounds to me that your progressive and new leadership came just in time uh, because the pandemic is now in a new phase uh, a year after the first uh, interminations, contaminations uh, in, in Europe. Uh, I would like to change to a different uh, topic because uh, our countries face similar issues, COVID-19, climate change, we're both EU member states, but we're also very different. Uh, if we take a look to the East, we see Germany as our neighbor with Angela Merkel uh, as the German leader. But if you look to your neighbor in the East, you see a completely different country. Uh, how do you deal with foreign policy issues and in particular the relationship with Russia? And this is true that we can't choose our neighbors. Uh, we can easily, you know, we would uh, swift our places with you, change our places with you, but uh, we have a neighbor like we have, so we have to work with that. Um, I mean, uh, in the recent uh, times, uh, everything that Russia is doing in, uh, in the Navalny case and oppressing the opposition, this is very worrying. And, and we see from our history that uh, when Russia has problems inside their country, um, you know, uh, people are not really satisfied with the uh, direction where the country is going, then uh, the leaders of uh, Russia uh, very often take up, you know, a small successful war uh, mm -hmm. in order to, you know, boost this and, and get the minds off uh, uh, the problems that uh, are inside the country. So that is our worry. But of course, we are members of, of NATO. We are uh, also spending a lot on our defense, uh, but we are still worried on these issues. So, uh, so uh, what uh, Russia is doing regarding the vaccinations and the info wars that they are having, uh, maybe even you know people uh, in central part of Europe are more um, uh, uh, vulnerable to uh, those uh, that propaganda because we are uh, used to uh, recognizing it and and maybe inside or in central part of Europe uh, people are not that much but uh, but of course we are working with what we have. Yeah. Uh, that this is very important to work closely together as a European Union to uh, have a strong stance towards uh, Russia and I would like to congratulate you with your strong messages uh, on these geopolitical uh, issues. It's very inspiring to see someone to step up the game uh, on these uh, topics. I, I took a look on your Twitter profile and you had meetings with, with Merkel, with Macron, with von der Leyen and I can imagine you've been uh, uh, talking a lot about the pandemic uh, but what are other priorities you're expecting the European Commission uh, to take a lead in the following years? Well, the topics are, are uh, of course, uh, the same. I mean, climate policy uh, with this pandemic, uh, it has been, you know, a bit, uh, I wouldn't say forgotten, but, uh, but uh, still uh, not the first priority because the crisis is, is there. Uh, of course, digital issues. I mean, we see so many opportunities for Europe. And, and as I've always said, you know, Estonia is small. We can be like a pilot project for, for all of Europe. And, and, and uh, currently, 
uh, tying this with the pandemic, uh, you know, there's this discussion about the uh, vaccinations passports. So, so we see, and we have already developed a pilot project together with the World Tra uh, Health Organization, so that we could have this global uh, trust network that, uh, you know, you could check um, and go, I mean, remember those times when we got to travel and then yeah. you had the boarding pass and then you yeah. put it, uh, you had a QR code and then QR code said that yes or no, you can board. And, and this should work the same way that you have this QR code that says that green or red, you have the vaccination or antibodies or whatever. So I think we should also, I mean, uh, move uh, with this project globally because uh, otherwise all you know different member states different uh, airlines will will come up with their own solutions and and uh, we don't really know if we can trust them um, so it is like passports can be issued by countries these uh, should be issued by countries as well to have this uh, trust that i can trust that this is issued by uh, authority that has the right it, it sounds very good. Estonia as a pilot project country <laughs> with a lot of innovative uh, solutions to get our freedoms back in the following year. That is very inspiring. Last but not, le uh, not least, uh, Madam Prime Minister, Estonia is now the only country in the world where both the Prime Minister and the President are female. Uh, does that feel special and is it important as an example uh, yeah, for the rest of the world? Well, uh, as you can imagine, I, I get this question a lot and I still don't know how to answer this because, you know, uh, I don't know if they ask the countries where they have both men, uh, prime minister and president male, that uh, do you feel special that you have uh, both of them men? So I don't, I don't really think it's an issue. I think uh, we also have a lot of uh, women, half of the women in the government, uh, uh, ministerial positions, but it wasn't because they're women, it's because they're competent people. Right. And that is what is uh, important. We just have very many competent women. I really like that answer. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Madam Prime Minister, dear Kaya, um, I could continue for hours, but I'm afraid uh, our time is up. I would like to thank you so much for your time. Um, good luck governing Estonia during this uh, incredible, difficult uh, time. So I wish you all the best and uh, thank you for joining us at the D66 Congress. Yes, and uh, thank you and the greetings to all my uh, D66 friends. Thank you and uh, I'm hoping that Sigrid Kaag can welcome you as a new Prime Minister anytime soon here in The Hague. Okay, good. Bye. Bye.